So I'm now going to attempt to hand over to Bishop Emma. I've got to find her. I'm here. Yes, I found you. And I'm going to spotlight Bishop Emma, who's just going to introduce the, uh, the service. Great. Well, good morning, everybody. It's, it's so wonderful to see you. Um, it, the, the little pictures of you uh, are just so wor uh, it warming my heart seeing each one of you. So si we've got 69 different households and there, there are quite a, a few with two people together. So that's a, that's a lot of people who are here together today. And by the wonders of modern technology, uh, we are able to join together, to be together and to worship together. And I'm really looking forward to worshipping with you. So I thought it might be helpful just to explain a little bit um, of what's going on here this morning. Uh, a big thank you at the start, uh, particularly to Michael, who's put together this service and put together the, the, the screen that you'll see. Uh, there's been quite a lot of going backwards and forwards and getting it right. So very grateful to Michael for doing that. But let me just explain. Today is one of those occasions in the life of the church when if you like, the full oddness of the Church of England comes to the fore. Uh, in a little while, you're going to be treated to a display of some of the most, most archaic and legal language that the church likes to use as, uh, as it licenses people to different roles. And today it's quite complicated because we are licensing um, several people to several different roles. And I'm going to just explain how that works. So the main thing that we're doing today is celebrating the ministry of the whole people of God across the Two Valleys Mission community. That's really what we're doing. No matter which names and which titles you're going to hear read today, the main thing is celebrating all of you working together as a mission community. Now, in order for that to happen, Different people need to be given roles to operate well across the widest possible base in the mission community. Now, we're a bit ahead of the game in Cumbria, and the Church of England doesn't really have a service for what we need to do here, but we need to work with the structures that we have. So up till now, Michael has been priest in charge of the benefits of Crosthwaite, Cartmel Fell, Witherslack and Winster. And today we're going to be licensing Michael as vicar of those parishes. Priest in charge is usually considered to be a temporary role until a suspension is lifted. Don't ask, I'm not going into all that this morning. Uh, and being made vicar uh, is making that role permanent. That's going to happen also to George as vicar of St. Thomas's and Crook. And we've, we're going to do that today but we'll also celebrate that with more of the St. Thomas's congregation uh, on Palm Sunday. Michael is also being made priest in charge of the parish of Underbarrow and Helsington to enable him to minister there too. Simon and Michelle are both being made associate priests of Crossthwaite, Cartmel Fell, Witherslack and Winster. This means that Simon and Michelle will be legally accountable to Michael as Vicar of the Benefice, but this will be a ministry team able to work together and to value each other's gifts and callings. Simon, although licensed across Thwaite, Cartmel, Fell, Witherslack and Winster, will of course be taking a leading role in the ministry in the parish of Underbarrow and Helsington. And that will be his primary focus for ministry, but he'll do that with the support of Michael and the whole ministry team. So what we celebrate today is that in Crosthwaite, Cartmel Fell, Witherslack and Winster, Underbarrow with Helsington and St Thomas's and Crook, the ministry team of Michael, Michelle, Simon, George and Vic as curate, will be able to work together with all the members of all the churches across the Two Valleys mission community to fulfill God's vision for us to follow him daily, speak boldly, care deeply and tread gently in Jesus name. I hope that explains a little bit of what we're doing here today. So I'm going to hand over to Vernon as Archdeacon to welcome you. Well, it's wonderful to be here and sorry, I'm behind the scenes controlling the screen as well. Um, it's really exciting. Thank you, Bishop Emma. And thank you to 
the wonderful people of the two valleys it's great that this is the launch of a mission community you're such a good group and i think it's exciting times ahead so welcome Thank you, Vernon. So let's begin our service together. And uh, as we heard at the start, if you would join in, uh, although muted, but join in with the words in yellow. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. And I think now we're going to have our first hymn. Thank you so much Michael and Michelle it's wonderful to sing isn't it even if we are doing it each in our own homes so we continue with our service we have come together to worship God and to celebrate the shared ministry of the whole people of God across the two valleys mission community God blesses his people with a rich variety of gifts and it's our duty and our joy to use those gifts to build up God's kingdom in our world. Today, we welcome Simon, George, Michelle, Michael and Vic to this mission community as it continues to take shape and license them for their ministries among us. Together, we dedicate ourselves to the service of God in these communities and listen afresh to God's call to each one of us. So let us humbly wait upon God as our worship continues, giving thanks for all that God has done to bring us to this moment. We keep a moment of silence together.
mindful of God's blessings, let us now ask forgiveness for those times when we've neglected God's call or failed in our service of one another and our communities. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came to proclaim good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Anne is going to bring us our reading. A reading from the end of Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 28, beginning at verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Anne, and uh, just want to share with you for a few moments uh, some reflections on those wonderful verses from Matthew's Gospel. Now, I wonder what you hope your last words might be. It's quite amusing to Google famous last words, which I've been doing this week. There's some quite good ones. Um, Spike Milligan's last words were apparently, I told you I was ill. Or there's the last words of John Sedgwick, who was general of the American army as he was shot mid-sentence. And his last words were, they couldn't hit an elephant at this dist. La famous last words. Altogether more uplifting as far as final words go are these we have just heard. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Not, of course, Jesus' last words, because Jesus continues to speak today, but his final words to his disciples before he ascended into heaven. And I'd like just for a moment to speak about the three alls that are in that passage. All authority, all nations, and all ways. Okay, maybe the last one is a little bit tentative, but you see what I mean. So firstly, all authority. All authority has been given to me, therefore go. So today we're licensing Simon, Michelle, Michael and George, and that gives them authority to minister in different ways across uh, these communities. But the authority of Jesus is shared with the whole of his church. And what an encouragement that is to us today. As I look at all your faces on the screen, I know that Jesus has given you authority to minister in his name. Remember that Jesus speaks these words from the other side of the cross. He has won the victory. He has defeated death. And he has the authority of the only one who has ever conquered death and sin and holds the keys to the kingdom. There's no authority that Jesus doesn't have. And with that authority, he sends out his disciples, a ragtag bunch of fishermen, tax collectors, people of dubious background and other hangers on to carry out his mission and continue his work in his name. 
sometimes I wonder why Jesus chose the people he did to give his authority to. Sometimes I think I might have been a little more selective in who I called and sent, but apparently Jesus sees things differently. One of the wonderful phrases in this reading is this one. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And notice the order of that. It doesn't say some worshipped him and some doubted. They all worshipped him and some doubted. And I think this seems to be reminding us that Christian faith is always a work in progress. We're never the finished article. We worship while we doubt. There is room for those who question. And how does Jesus respond to this mixed group of worshippers and doubters? He gives them all the same commission, go and make disciples. So we start where we are and we're sent with the authority of the King of Kings. Secondly, all nations. Jesus sends those first disciples as he sends us now into all the forgotten corners of the world to seek and save the lost and to make new disciples. Jesus didn't tell his disciples to go and build great churches or to get lots of converts. He told them to go, and as they were going, to make disciples. So how about us? Well, it's very difficult, isn't it, for us to go anywhere at the moment, certainly not to all the nations. Sometimes we can't even leave our front doors. But that doesn't mean that we should stop sharing the good news of Jesus. The point of Jesus' words are that there should be no part of the world where the good news of Jesus doesn't reach. And that includes every corner of the communities and places we go to day by day in the Two Valleys Mission community. It includes Crosswaite, Cartmel Fell, Witherslack, Winster, Underbarrow, Helsington, Kendall, Crook and everywhere in between. In our schools, our farms, our shops, businesses, homes, with younger people, with older people, and with those in between, all nations. And finally, always with us. The final words of the great preacher John Wesley before his death on the 2nd of March, 1791, were this. The best of all is God is with us. The best of all is God is with us. It can all seem quite daunting, this mission stuff, fulfilling the Great Commission, being sent out to make disciples in the name of Jesus, becoming a mission community. So it's just as well that we don't do it alone. It's important to remember that these are the words of the Great Commission, not the Great Command. When you commission somebody, you not only tell them what they're going to do, but you also give them the authority, the tools, the power to be able to do it. Now, recently, I thought I would be very grown up and brave and hang some blinds in our home here in Kendall. And I knew we needed a new drill. So I set off down the road to home base, which is just the end of our road, and I bought a drill for myself. I felt very grown up. And I was amazed at how cheap it was. And it was only when I got it home that I realized that the drill I had bought needed a very expensive power pack to work that I hadn't bought. Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't give us a task without the power to fulfill it. He gives us not only his authority, but his assurance of his very presence with us by his spirit always. And so as you, as a mission community, set out on this new phase of your life together with Michael, Michelle, Simon, George and Vic, duly commissioned alongside the whole people of God in the churches represented here today, I pray that you would go out in the name of Jesus to make disciples for him together, knowing that you go with the full authority of Jesus and knowing that he is with you always. Let me pray for you and then we will continue with our service. Let's pray. Out of our ordinary everyday lives, you have gathered us here, holy God. We join with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to bless you, to immerse ourselves in your grace and love 
open our eyes, our hearts and our minds to your presence with us. Take our longings for your goodness to shape our lives, this mission community, our world. Speak your word. Infuse us with your courage, your hope and your love. Awaken us to your Holy Spirit, who is making all things new, even us. We ask this in Jesus' name, who sends us out to speak love and mercy and grace to those who are waiting, longing, hoping for a sign that they are not alone, that you are a God of love, that you're a saviour who knows their name, that the Holy Spirit is leading them home. Amen. Michael and Michelle are going to lead us in uh, another hymn. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Thank you very much. That was that was wonderful. I just listened that time. So I thought it was just beautiful to hear your voices. Thank you. We're now going to come to the legal bit. Um, Michael and Michelle and George and Simon swore their oaths and declarations also over Zoom uh, at nine o'clock this morning. Um, so they've done that bit. So now I'm going to read the licenses. I'm going to sort of try and uh, read the common bits and then read all of the individual bits of them. And hopefully uh, I'll finish sometime before lunchtime. But no, we'll, I'm going to read their licenses um, and hand over their licenses as it were to them. So this is where the legal language comes in. Emma Einson. Bishop of Penrith, under the authority of the Right Reverend Father in God, James, by divine permission, Bishop of Carlisle, to my beloved in Christ, Michael David Woodcock, Clerk in Holy Orders, greeting. I do hereby institute and admit you as vicar in the benefice of Crosthwaite, Cartmel Fell, Witherslack and Winster, within the diocese and jurisdiction of the said Bishop of Carlisle, to which you were presented jointly by the trustees of Dean Barwick's charity, the incumbent of the benefits of Kendall and the said Bishop of Carlisle, the patrons. And I invest you with all the rights and duties of the said benefice and commit to you the cure of souls of the parishioners thereof, saving to the said Bishop and his successors all Episcopal rights. 
to Michael David Woodcock, Clerk in Holy Orders, greetings. Whereas the benefice of Underbarrow with Helsington within our diocese and jurisdiction now stand vacant, I do hereby grant you license and authority to serve during the said bishop's pleasure or until the admission of an incumbent to the said benefice, whichever period shall be the shorter, as priest in charge of the said benefice and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that office until the bishop shall rescind that authority. To my beloved in Christ, Michelle, Lisa, Woodcock, Clark in Holy Orders, greeting. I do hereby grant you license and authority to serve as associate priest in the benefice of Crosthwaite, Cartmel Fowl, Witherslack and Winster within the diocese and jurisdiction of the said bishop to serve during the said bishop's pleasure and to perform all ecclesiastical duties of the said office belonging until the said bishop shall rescind his authority. To my beloved in Christ, Simon Charles Howard, clerk in Holy Orders, greeting. I do hereby grant our license and authority to serve as an associate priest in the benefice of Crosthwaite, Cartmel Fell, Witherslack and Winster within our diocese and jurisdiction of the said bishop to serve during the bishop's pleasure and to perform all ecclesiastical duties to the said office belonging until the said bishop shall rescind his authority. To my beloved in Christ, George William Briggs, clerk in Holy Orders, greeting. I do hereby institute and admit you as vicar in the benefice of St. Thomas Kendall and Crook in plurality within the diocese and jurisdiction of the said Bishop of Carlisle to which you were presented solely by the Church Pastoral Aid Society, the patron, and I invest you with all the rights and duties of the said benefice and commit to you the cure of souls of the parishioners thereof, saving to the said Bishop and his successors all Episcopal rights. And in relation to all of these, in testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and the Episcopal seal of the Bishop of Carlisle is hereunto affixed this 31st day of January in the year of our Lord 2021. Simon, George, Michael and Michelle receive this cure of souls which is both yours and mine in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us ask God to bless Simon, George, Michelle, and Michael, and Vic, to give them joy in their homes and family lives, and in their ministries, and to renew within them the gifts of his Spirit. Julian Lampson from Cartmel Fell is going to lead us in his first prayer, followed by Mike Fleetwood from Winston. Holy God, fill these your servants, Simon, George, Michelle, Michael and Vic, with your grace. Make them alive to your spirit and ready to do your will. May they lead your people boldly walk with them lovingly, share with them creatively, and send them forth joyfully to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our great high priest and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, giver of all things, may your blessing rest upon Simon, George, Michelle, Michael, and Vic, in their homes, where there is much coming and going, may your peace be known. In Christian service, may your joy be found. And at all times, may your love bring unity and strength through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. People of this mission community, I present to you your new ministers now duly licensed and installed, and I invite you to greet them and their families in the name of Christ. I commend them to your love and to your prayers. We welcome you. May the Lord richly bless you. Bless you. 
and, and make you a blessing, blessing among, among us. us. And so now I uh, invite you, this is going to be a holy cacophony. I invite you, if you would like, to unmute and to join me in greeting uh, your new ministers with a hearty round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful. You have to unmute yourself for a moment. The body of Christ is made up of many parts and many ministries, so that the church may proclaim the good news of salvation to all. Simon, George, Michelle, Michael, and Vic. God has called us to serve alongside you in this place. Asking all members of the ministry team across our two valleys churches, will you collaborate with your colleagues in the service of Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, affirm, celebrate and encourage their ministries? With the help of God. With the help of God, I will. Now asking on behalf of our two Valleys congregations, Simon, George, Michelle, Michael and Vic, and members of the ministry team, will you support us? Will you work with each other, learning from each other's special skills and be ready to share your own? With the help of God. With the help of God, we will. The response to these questions is for all of us to say, uh, whether muted or unmuted. Simon, George, Michelle, Michael, Vic, and all the people of this benefice and mission community, will you, with the help of the Holy Spirit, pray and work to enable the good news that God is for all to reach the people of this parish and the Two Valleys Mission Community and beyond? Wonderful. Will you commit to follow Jesus daily as disciples of Christ? With the help of God, we will. Will you, as a community, to commit commit to care deeply for one another? With the help of God, we will. Will you speak boldly Christ's gospel of love? With the help of God, we will. Will you tread gently as faithful stewards of God's goodness? With the help of God, we will. So let's say this prayer together. Almighty God, we thank, we thank you for, for your gift. Take, Take us, us and use us, us to love and serve, and serve all people, people in the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and in the name, name of, of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Great to hear all of you commit to those things. Wonderful. Simon is going to lead us now in our intercessions. Keep your computers on mute, uh, but do say the responses at home and we'll hear Michael and Michelle sort of responding on our behalf. To now mute. Lord God, today you bring us to a new stage of our journey with you. In thanksgiving for your faithfulness and constancy, we bring our prayers before you. When we gather in fellowship and service, free us with your love. When we pray and study the scriptures, fill us with your joy. When we preach and proclaim the gospel, fill us with faith. When we lead and take on responsibility, when we share the good things you give us, free us with your generosity. When we sense the sufferings of the world, 
fill us with your peace. And Lord God, we're so aware of those across the world and in our community who are suffering because of the COVID pandemic. And we pause now to bring them before you and hold them in your love. To scientists and leaders, grant wisdom and grace. To health workers and carers, grant resilience and the support that they need. To teachers and parents and all key workers, grant strength and patience. To all who are feeling overwhelmed, especially those anxious about their finances and their future, grant hope and glimmers of light in their darkness. Surround all those who are grieving, all those who are unwell, their families and their friends, with your healing, loving presence. In a moment's silence, we lift to God particular individuals in our hearts and minds today. Grant us, Lord, the gifts of your spirit, so to share our lives that we are filled with your love, and so to love the world that it is filled with your life. And hear us now as we pray for the coming of your kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your, your will, will be done, done on, on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us today, Give us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh, 
Going to invite us now to uh, remain muted but to pray along with me a prayer that's been written for the refreshed vision we have a refreshed god for all vision which is a vision to follow daily care deeply speak boldly and tread gently and this prayer helps us com to commit to doing that together and so let's pray living lord as we offer to you our common life Refresh our vision, that we may know your will and seek to follow in all your ways. May we follow daily as your disciples, care deeply for one another in community. Speak boldly your gospel words of love and tread gently as faithful stewards of your goodness. We ask this in the power of your name as creator redeemer and sustainer of our lives today and forever amen a final prayer of blessing almighty god who for the salvation of the world gives to his people many gifts and ministries to the advancement of his glory stir up in you the gifts of his grace and sustain each one of you in your own ministry. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I'm going to hand back over to Michael to describe what happens next, but just to say thank you very much for being here this morning. It's been a great joy to worship alongside with you, alongside you, and I look forward to seeing all the marvellous things that will happen in the Two Valleys Mission community. So God bless you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Bishop Emma. Um, really a joy to have you amongst us, and just lovely to see at the moment all these faces on the screen. <laughs> Uh, the screen. So thank you everybody for bearing with Zoom. Yeah, and, um, if you away, want to see everybody, you need to change your view to gallery view, yeah, where you okay. can see it, all the faces right. of folk who are here.